There's an intense legal battle going on in New Delhi over your favorite lace chips. PepsiCo India has been stuck in a legal battle over the rights to its FC5 potato variety grown exclusively for its popular lace potato chips since 2019. And the latest in this is a Delhi High Court order that has gone in PepsiCo's favor. I'm Apoorva Mandhani and in this video, I'm going to tell you all about PepsiCo's potato wars. Now, why is this potato variety special? The FC5 variety, like I mentioned, it was registered in the US as FL 2027 and it has 5% lower moisture content. That is, it has 80% moisture content as compared to the usual 85. This variety is therefore considered more suitable for processing and therefore for making snacks such as potato chips. According to the Potato Association of America, the variety was first cultivated by Dr. Robert W. Hoops, who holds the most potato patents and potato variety variety protections in the whole world. He was hired by the Frito-Lay company, which is an American subsidiary of PepsiCo, as a principal scientist or potato breeder at the Research Center US in 1987. He then developed disease-resistant potato varieties superior in flavor and color. Several of his varieties are grown all over the world for PepsiCo's famous potato chips. Now, FL 2027 came to be registered in the United States in 2005. PepsiCo applied for registration of the potato variety in June 2011 in India, and it was registered in 2016. So it essentially got what is called a Plant Variety Protection Certificate or a PVP Certificate. This registration was done under the Protection of Plant Varieties and Farmers' Rights Act 2001. And uh, in simplest of words, briefly, registration under this law confers it gives an exclusive right on the breeder, uh, his agent, licensee or successor to produce, sell, market, distribute, import or export the variety. So essentially exclusive rights over the variety that has been registered. Now cut to April 2019, PepsiCo sued nine Gujarat farmers for cultivating this same potato variety accusing the farmers of infringing its rights or patent or the PVP registration. It sought over rupees 1 crore each from the farmers for alleged infringement under the Protection of Plant Varieties and Farmers Rights Act 2001. The case triggered a severe backlash from farmers and political parties alike. However, Pex PepsiCo withdrew the suit soon after discussions with the government. But this, like I said, garnered a lot of criticism and attention. And this is when Kavita Kuruganti, who is the convener of the Alliance for Sustainable and Holistic Agriculture, filed an application for revocation of the registration in June 2019, concerned about the impact of the registered variety on the livelihood of the farmers. This application was filed under the same law before what is called the Protection of Plant Varieties and Farmers' Rights Authority at New Delhi. She had sought revocation on several grounds, including incorrect information provided by PepsiCo and alleging that the grant of protection was not in public interest. Among other things, Kuruganti had claimed that PepsiCo had violated the 2001 law by suing the farmers because the law lists down farmers' rights as well. Uh, you can see the provision on your screens right now. She also pointed out that necessary documents were not submitted to the registrar at, it, at the time of registration. For instance, while Dr. Hoops was shown as the breeder of the variety, the application for registration was filed by Recort Inc., which was later changed to Frito-Lay North America or FLNA. However, only an unstamped assignment deed between Hoops and FLNA was submitted and no assignment deed between FLNA and PepsiCo India Holdings Private Limited was submitted. Why is this important? Because the, uh, the petitioner said that the law only confers a right on an assignee of the breeder to apply for registration. So Hoops assignees could only apply for registration. PepsiCo had claimed that there was an oral assignment between it and FLNA, uh, a submission which was rejected by the authority. PepsiCo India Holdings Private Limited and FLNA are both affiliates of PepsiCo Inc., However, Kuruganti had contended that the absence of a formal assignment by FLNA in favor of PepsiCo was fatal to the application. Accepting these submissions, the authority actually revoked PepsiCo's registration in December 2021. The authority had ruled that PepsiCo's uh, registration for the potato variety was granted despite the fact that it had not submitted several documents at the time of registration. It further highlighted the hardship caused to the farmers uh, because of PepsiCo's actions. It noted discrepancies in the date of first sale of the variety, which is supposed to be submitted uh, in the registration application. 
it further pointed out several discrepancies in the entire process of granting PepsiCo the registration for the variety. Now, PepsiCo, of course, challenged this order, the authority's order before the Delhi High Court. It first went to a single judge who upheld the order passed by the authority in July last year. It challenged the uh, order, the single judge's order, as well as the authority's order again in the Delhi High Court before a two-judge bench. And this division bench of the High Court now felt that neither the application nor the ultimate grant of registration suffered from a fundamental misdeclaration or a failure to provide information as required under the Act. So the court basically ruled that PepsiCo's registration should not have been revoked by the authority. As for the dispute over FLNA authorizing PepsiCo to file a registration application, the court pointed out that the provision uh, enables not only the assignee of the breeder, but even one who may have been empowered by the assignee to make such an application. So it noted that back in September 2019, a letter was filed by Frito-Lay North America clarifying that it had allowed PepsiCo to file the application for registration. As for the ground uh, that filing of various suits by PepsiCo was violative of the rights granted to farmers under the law, the High Court's division bench now felt that the petitioner should have established that PepsiCo had commenced or initiated those actions merely to pressurize and intimidate farmers and that they were based on allegations totally frivolous or unsubstantiated. The court observed that the petitioners had been unable to show that those suits were vexatious or that they had been instituted as a part of predatory tactics of PepsiCo. The High Court has therefore allowed PepsiCo's appeal and set aside the judgment passed in July this year as well as the order passed by the authority. What this essentially means is that the renewal application that was made by PepsiCo, that would now be again uh, be on the file of the registrar who can now look into whether its registration should be renewed. So while PepsiCo seems to have won this round in the potato patent wars, the ball is now in the authority's court. This is Apoorva Mandhani for The Print. Thank you so much for watching this video and for more such videos, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.